Well, hello, Brittany Tran. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. Welcome to Inspired Caregiver. We I'm are excited. I would love for you to introduce yourself and just give us a little bit of background. Um, yeah. Quite extensive. Well, um, I'm Brittany Tran, and I first got interested in senior care. You know, I'd always been fascinated and appreciated the wisdom of seniors and had great relationship with my grandparents. But when I was in college, I just felt this big urge and we had a um, assignment to decide what social issue we would like to see change. And I just felt like our generation didn't kind of respect or look up to or utilize relationship with seniors. So became kind of passionate about that. So I started working as a CNA, um, also as a bath aid and life enrichment assistant, just loved it. And so um, started studying gerontology. And then in my career, worked admissions for um, a lot of years, which I just saw, you know, the whole healthcare process from maybe an incident happening at home to a hospital stay, then that transition to rehab and either back home or long-term care and just loved walking, helping families walk through that process. It was just tangible and um, a variety, <laughs> saw a lot. And <clears throat> from that was able to step into a position as an adult day director. And I'm a huge champion of adult day. I think it's a resource for families and caregivers that is so beneficial, so necessary, but also so beneficial for the senior. Mm -hmm. We called ours the club, <laughs> just to have a club have a group of friends, have somewhere to go that you just look forward to going, have a meal. You know, the, a meal at a senior center is kind of outdated a little bit, but I think just that socialization, you know, morning coffee club, whatever that is, those, um, you know, just type of routines are super important. So um, from there, most recently was a memory care director just until this past July. Wow. So all of that kind of focusing on memory care and, you um, you know, as you and I have touched base just super briefly, there's a lot that goes along with memory care in itself. Right. Well, and you were a tremendous resource to families. So not just the people that were participating in the adult yeah. day services, but really coaching and mentoring families as they were on that journey as a caregiver. Yeah. Uniquely both admissions and, um, you know, adult day, those are really focused on family caregivers, hosting family support groups, etc. And then now you are at Life Loop. Yes. So tell us a little bit about Life Loop. So now I love helping teams um, just work a little more efficient and work smarter, um, helping their culture and just helping them focus on the job they're really there to do and spend time with residents and love and serve them well. So when I first saw Life Loop, I just was blown away and thought this is a game changer. It was just some really basic tech that the senior care industry was 10 years behind on. I felt like yeah. this could just, um, you know, really need and really e easily use, like there's an app for that. And so just really helping teams easily connect, get all the information to families that they want, um, you know, and get pictures out. It's just a one step rather than collecting all your pictures, downloading them, emailing out to each family individually, writing something. I mean, just putting a five hour process into 10 minutes if possible. So super streamlines it. Yeah. Well, but in a good we, way that doesn't take away, you know, the relationship of it really enhances relationship of staff and residents and family. So. Right. So that the people that are in the buildings can really focus on providing that enrichment to the residents in the yes. building instead of navigating. Doing really manual entry work or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Well, it's a program that I have in the skilled nursing facility that I work in. And also I'm a family member of That's my mother-in-law uh, lives in a memory care community. And yeah. so as a family member, it's it's really reassuring to have that life loop program where we can log in and see what she has participated in during the day. So it's not necessarily us having to call the staff to check up. It's really yeah. easy at our, yeah. And then when you do talk to staff, you can really, you know, talk about details or nuances or really how she's doing versus just those basic, like, yep, here's what she did today. Here's how things are going. And 
you know, even if she declined something, maybe she's, you know, if she declined her favorite thing, you know, something might be going on. Um, and just as a great conversation when you get to talk with her as well. Right. Abs absolutely. So you can circle back and say, oh, you participated in yeah. exercise. Sure. I saw today. a picture of this. It looked awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the day cool. services, the adult day yeah. services. In the caregiver support group that I am in on Facebook, I know there are a lot of um, stress. And there's just so many stressors as a family yeah. caregiver. So I think the two things, if we can get to both of them during this conversation are the adult day services and then what enrichment, how we can focus at home in a caregiver role on enrichment instead of yeah. being task oriented in the cares that were provided. Yeah. So tell us more about the adult day services. Um, I am a proponent because um, what I got to experience firsthand is you know, seniors who are with their caregivers at home, whether that be a spouse or a son or daughter, you know, they were able to come and just belong at a place, have a group of friends, have these things that they really experienced in their life that maybe they hadn't had in just a couple of years prior or um, when they were isolated at their own home, maybe before they moved in with family. So another thing, I think if families are able to stay um, together longer, I think that's obviously beneficial and um you know to have someone come live in your home that's a really big commitment and sacrifice and just needs to come along with a balance and so you know you just need your own space as well you kind of need your own space to do your own things and so it creates that level of independence and then gives you a three-hour break to run to the grocery store you know it can be really cost effective you're not paying you know several hundreds of dollars a day um we had a really low rate of like $30 for three hours. It's probably closer. It's probably gone up a little since then, but um, you know, just those kind of short chunks of time, whether that be once a week or twice a week or all five days a week for a short time. And that also allows family members to still work full-time or part-time and care for their loved one at home, which really we don't throw out as an option a lot. We say, you know, the options are full-time in-home care, you know, in-home caregiving, um, you know, independent living, assisted living, right. School nursing. So, um, it just gives that flexibility. Well, and social isolation before mm -hmm. COVID was a right. chronic issue. It really was actually at epidemic levels. Mm -hmm. The detriments on our health is the equivalent of six alcoholic drinks a day or 15 cigarettes yeah. a day. Cigarettes. Yeah. Which I we mean, say those things, but I think I can't even really grasp it. Right. So really the benefit of that adult day service is socialization also for the person at home. Like we can't be everything. Yeah. Can't be a friend. Person. Yeah, correct. So it's nice and to have the option. To go, so true. Yeah. And I think, <clears throat> I think just taking that step for caregivers to here to really take care of themselves and really fight for balance in their life, I think, our Midwestern values um, go a little too far in this space, you know, as you know, and just think, you know, kind of carry all the burden of, I don't want to burden my kids with this. I'll just do it all. I don't want to burden anybody else with this when it really is a blessing to allow others to help. It makes other people feel purposeful. They really do want to help. So, um, you know, adult date, same, same things for having a caregiver come in your home. If you're comfortable with that once a week, twice a week, just to take a little bit off of that for you to have, you know, feel free to go outside and mow your lawn and not worry about your um, loved one inside or maybe share some of those most cumbersome tasks um, if that's assistance with bathing or something like that. Well, and really historically, we weren't designed to age like this. We mm -hmm. were more in community and siblings. Yes really stayed together more, but it was in the forties. We had the urban sprawl. People began moving out of state. So yeah. that caregiver role does tend now to fall primarily on one family member. Yeah. And it's just, it's just too much. Yeah. And often, you know, I think that's what maybe starts some frustration and distance between siblings is because one is you know, carrying 98% and the others might feel like they're carrying some with 2%. And I feel like if they speak up, you know, it downplays that other, but just to find that balance and open communication is really hard. 
it can be really hard. Well, I think but, yeah, there's a lot of hope. <laughs> there, there is a lot of there is a lot of hope. I think this podcast addresses quite a few of those frustrations and concerns. Um, and I know yes. that uh, we have I have a listener in Germany. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? So it's yeah. not just within the US. Um, we have we have people around the world that are now listening to this. Awesome. And a huge topic for so many. And I think we're not good at looking into the future and being proactive about aging. It's hard. Um, but whether that be a little bit proactive um, for ourselves and for especially for our loved ones. So the benefits of adult day services are not just for the caregiver who right. really, like you said, were fighting for balance. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many benefits for the, the loved ones. So tell, like, yes. what does that look like when someone arrives in the morning for <laughs> a certain yeah. part of that? You know, I think each um, community or day service in self will feel really different. So I just recommend visiting one, touring, um, I think, most are probably just opening again for tours and being able to um, physically be there. So, you know, um, walking in and having a hot breakfast is pretty exciting. So, yeah. um, you know, it's usually a very positive thing. We I even had families just say, you know, they had a father who lost his spouse. He, um, you know, had just slipped into depression he was grieving just having a really hard time they had seen him declining declining and when he came back um you know met with some other veterans just started building those relationships he just all of his humor all of his spirit mm -hmm. everything came back and they were just in tears They're like my dad came back to life again like this is him we didn't know if we'd ever see this again um, so stories like that are so amazing and um you know had a client moving out of state um with some family changes and just the goodbyes were always really hard of, mm. you know, seeing these are, this is just my community. These are my friends, um, just felt such close relationships. And that's so awesome for staff too, to be able to build those relationships. Um, you know, I think all staff really does have a genuine heart in senior care if they are caring for your loved one. It's too hard for little pay for them not to. <laughs> I 100% um, agree with you. They would go walk down the street and work at Chipotle. If they didn't care. So that heart and desire um, to care is very much there, I would say 99% of the time. So yeah, um, they want to build that relationship. And, you know, in short-term rehab, you don't get quite as much of that, but any other kind of ongoing services, it's just so rewarding both ways. And you know, re people really have the full freedom to how they want to spend their day, whether they just want to sit in the living room, read the newspaper all day, great for them. If they want to follow the schedule, things going on, awesome. You want to sit outside on the patio, awesome. So, you know, it's not um, these tasks you're going to have to do or go through everything if you're not wanting to, or that's not something that interests them. So really just trying to um, allow them the freedom to spend the day how they want to. And surrounded with other people. Yeah. yeah. And just being a part of the bigger community at large. And so we tried to really focus on um, meeting with some preschools or uh, we had an after school program from the middle school down the street, just come once a week after and play games. Um, you know, volunteer opportunities are huge. So I think having a loved one at home, if you're able to both go out and, you know, serve at a soup kitchen or any like public school volunteer, you know, being able to give back, I think is such core to all of our lives. Um, that can be a huge difference maker for seniors feeling purpose. hundred percent. We talked a little bit before about how task oriented and care clinical driven caregivers mm -hmm. can become at home. And we lose sight of the enrichment side. Yeah. And how if potentially there's a little more investment of time in the area of enrichment, it can make some of those other tasks feel a little bit easier and more enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. For, for ideas for people, for having more of an enrichment activity uh, calendar at home, what are some, some things you can think of or suggest? 
I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of a caregiver and imagine them listening and thinking, these ladies may not have any idea what they're talking about. Do you know how hard it is to have one meal, get my mom dressed in any presentable clothes, you know, go anywhere? Yes. Like we get that. We hear you. Yes. A hundred percent. So I was, just think that feels way too hard. That feels like one more thing. Do you already get that? I'm so exhausted every minute. I can't do one more thing. Right. However, um, like you said, I do think having a really set expected schedule, if possible, um, something you really look forward to in that day, whether it's Monday, you drive through and get ice cream. Um, Tuesday, it's just a scenic drive somewhere. You know, if things are getting restless at home or, um, you know, your loved one's just frustrated and feels like complaining, anything like that, just having that change of scenery, you're not really having to go do anything, just ride in the car and come back. It can just um, be really refreshing for both of you. Going to the movies was, um, I had a family caregiver in the past was just their most refreshing thing um, because it was really hard. Their loved one with some memory loss, you know, just really difficult to kind of repeat, go through everything, really difficult to manage their day. But one thing she did still was able and really enjoyed was sitting down um, at the movie theater. And there's really great options, um, matinee prices, or I know here um, in our city, we have $5 Tuesdays. So, you know, can find those deals without breaking a budget. Um, you know, in just budgeting those things, you know, maybe one going sitting at a restaurant that has a deal that yeah. night and just having that something every day to look forward to. It can be as simple or as complex as possible and maybe asking them what they want to do or where they want to go. When I was a caregiver for both of my grandmothers, with my second grandmother, we were growing our family. So I had one to three kids at any given time when I was helping her. And I would remember um, in my situation, she actually did live in a senior living community. Mm -hmm. And so I would go and pick her up and take her out for lunch once a week. Yeah. It was such a scene with me with a toddler and like the infant carrier and my grandma's wheelchair. <laughs> trying to get navigate in and out of restaurants yeah ultimate I mean it really was um a lot of efforts yes but totally worth it like we we had some really good laughs about it too that's really awesome yeah Yeah. in memories that are really worth it to you a hundred percent yeah awesome so we have families um working to uh, provide some additional enrichment at home. I think really they need to be taking care of themselves as well. Like yes. prioritizing themselves, because I think we've both seen that a lot of times caregivers give everything to their loved one and then they actually become sick. What are some of the experiences? You yeah. Have? Yeah. That I think it's hard for caregivers to hear and I'm not great at having Uh, difficult conversations. So, but I think one difficult conversation I had a lot was I see your health changing. I think Mm -hmm. especially spouses of our oldest generation currently, um, they're very much a generation that's like, everything's okay. I'm great. Because I mean, they could be um, closer on their deathbed and say, I feel fine. (laughs) Really at their doctor's appointments, not, um, you know, saying everything's good and really not getting the care they need or deserve um, just because they're being really polite um, for whatever reason. And Mm -hmm. so I think it takes a lot of encouragement um, to explain to somebody, it really is the most loving and giving thing for you to take time by yourself and take time for self-care because if your health declines, then there's no one, you know, or not the best care for them left because your potential, you know, the, the one that knows them the most um, or their best caregiver. So I think hopefully when seen in that light, it can really help. Um, And I think for both parties, having something else to take care of, again, it might seem like one more thing, but just having a few plants or Mm. some fish or a cat um, that your loved one looks forward to taking care of, um, you know, that can just, little things can really brighten both of your perspectives and kind of put your attention and efforts toward that 
as well. And then you've got a, a combined, like something that you're both working towards together. Yeah, that's very true. Love even that. tomato plant. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Give me even inside. <laughs> um, and another like idea that came to mind, um, I feel in most areas, there's always a need for delivery for meals on wheels. Mm. And that I think has even been been even more important with the pandemic. So I think even if your loved one sits in the car the whole time, but just driving and delivering that can feel so purposeful or if they're able to, you know, carry one small thing while you're carrying the rest and you're delivering that to a person. I mean, I think those conversations with maybe similar, potentially more similar age individuals, um, you know, you can just really build relationships that way as well. And to potentially people who need it the most and may not have any um, human contact or relationship. I love that idea. And that, that really does tap into that internal need to have a sense of purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I, sure. I love that idea. Well, thank you so much. I, yes. I love having Life Loop in the building for the ease of communication for our families. And then on the family side, I love having that so that I can feel really much more connected to my family member that's in memory yeah. care. Yes, important to know your staff and maybe you know that one staff member can send them, shoot them a message directly. Right. They're on your list to message or anything like that. So um, my only last thought is that you need self-care, but that also maybe can just be expressing your feelings or venting once in a while, you might not have that outlet. Like it's okay to just say, this is so hard. Yeah. You know that you, you know, love and would not change it. Um, but it's good to express those things. And one resource I would recommend a lot is um, the Alzheimer's helpline. And that can be for any dementia or any memory care related. Um, but I think they'd be happy to talk with any caregivers. And I know there's, you know, some cognition impairment associated with so many diagnosis. And so that is just a helpline you can Google and they are professionals to answer the line 24 seven. So sometimes it's 2 a.m. when you're doing mm -hmm. I need to talk to or I have no idea what to do in this situation. Right. Um, there is even times, you know, as a director myself, just to call and say, is there anything else you can think of or recommendations? Um, so call them just to share and just event or for any ideas. That is such a good idea. I'll put that phone number in the show yes. notes so that people can just link directly, yeah. directly to it. What, and you mentioned there was a book that you loved as yes. well, because so many books are very clinical driven or very mm -hmm. mushy. And there was one that was really appealing to you. So we'll get yes. the title of that book and put that also in the show yes. notes. Yes. Yep. Just tangible insights, but then just also walking with somebody and seeing their perspective of going through those different identities of you are their spouse, but then you become their caregiver and it, it that's difficult. And how to walk through that with, you need humor yeah. and grace, um, just need to laugh at the situation sometimes, but how to, yeah, just how to walk through well. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Yes, no, it's been awesome talking. And I know being and chatting. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of goodness in this conversation. So people have a great take away. Awesome. Yes. Thank Very you. great. And I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody would want to reach out anytime. So perfect. Well, we'll put your contact information in the show notes as well. Awesome. All Thank right. you so much, Thank Michelle. You. Thanks for all you do. Absolutely. All right.